take a look at this dog. It looks a lot like this grey wolf, and this coyote, and all of these species. That's because they're all offshoots of the same evolutionary tree. It's the same when you look at these house cats and European wildcats, and all of these wild cats. But when you take a look at this one, sapiens, you and me, we are alone. Or are we? It would seem so. All your life, images like this have shown you that we sapiens are special. The pinnacle of creation, the most evolved form of humans. And we are special, but not because we're the only ones like us, but because at one point, we were surrounded by other humans like us, and against all odds, ended up alone. Take a look at this map. What you're looking at is the approximate ranges in which various human species once lived. Homo erectus of Africa and Asia were tall, fearsome hunters and had 2 million years of survival experience. The Neanderthals of Europe and the Middle East were bulkier, stronger, and better adapted to colder environments than us. Sapiens only started to appear on the East African subcontinent approximately 300,000 years ago, and we kind of just stayed there for a very long time. We were kind of like the lame kids on the evolutionary block. But then 70,000 years ago, something happened, and it resulted in us being the only human species left on this planet. So what the hell happened? The first thing that comes to most people's minds, unironically, is that sapiens survived because of their large brains. But when you look at a comparison of our skulls, compared to Neanderthals, our brains were actually smaller than theirs. The second theory is that sapiens survive because of their ability to use language. This is one of these magical abilities that we humans have. We can transmit really complicated thoughts to one another. But Neanderthals also had similar vocal structures, so that's not special either. In fact, there are many animals with complex language and communication Male systems. Male whales repeat each other's songs and add to them, so they become ever more complex and beautiful. So what set us apart wasn't our brain or our language but how we use them. This is the story of a violent separation. Unfortunately, there was no fairy tale ending in this story. Approximately 70,000 years ago, a cognitive revolution occurred in the brains of sapiens that allowed us to communicate in unprecedented ways. What caused this revolution, you may ask? It could have been a chance mutation in the way our neurons are wired. It could have been aliens. The truth is, we don't really know. But what it did do was it gave us the ability to use language to talk about things we as sapiens have never seen, touched, or felt before. It gave us the ability to tell stories. Stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. But stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. No more! Let's get that some thousands of protesters protest. have gathered that here as you can see behind march. me. That means disturb the peace! That means jail! Martin Luther King is the shot and that was killed tonight. They're not asking, we're demanding. Give us the vote! Stories can break the dignity of the people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. I have a dream today! Story. Story is all that matters. Setup. Conflict. Resolution. But we aren't the only species of animal who engages in conflict. Ants will fight over territory. Bees will fight over resources. What changed was why we fight. Chinggis Khan believed that Tengiri wanted him to conquer the entire world in his name. Anyone who resisted the Mongols was resisting Tengiri's will. And for this insubordination, had to die. I mean, let's be honest. There's only so long you can keep an empire that looks like this together. Way too big. I mean, this is the biggest land empire in history. One thing's for sure, said Moscow, which was soon becoming the Russian Empire. We're not going to let anyone sneak up on us again like the Mongols did. And that helped fuel this race to just keep going east. The ability to tell stories, whether they are religious, philosophical, political, or ideological, allowed sapiens who weren't even born in the same family to collectively cooperate in large numbers towards a common purpose. And when we find a common purpose, 
we have the ability to do some amazing things. Hundreds of thousands of protesting farmers, for months they have camped just outside the capital, Delhi, demanding the repeal of new laws that deregulate agriculture. But as history has shown, stories can also be used to justify terrifying acts of violence and cruelty. And it's through stories that sapiens, in their never-ending pursuit for land and resources, could have justified acts of violence against Homo erectus and the Neanderthals, pushing them from their land and leading to, quite possibly, the largest genocide in human history. Millions of years had passed since we diverged from species like ants and bees, but it's as if suddenly we'd regained their ability to work toward a common purpose. But this time, it wasn't locked to just natural things like resources and territory. It was steered by the stories of tyrants, poets, and visionaries. The ability to tell stories is what allowed sapiens to break the laws of nature and solidify the story of us being special. But even if the Neanderthals or any of the other human species were alive today, would their presence have destroyed this idea of us being special? Or would it yet once again give us another reason to tell stories that divide us? We will never know. Because of us, they aren't here with us today, but we do still have the ability to tell the story of what that world could have looked like. <laughs>